hear the word of the Lord. I say one more time. Hear the word of the Lord. First, let me say to you, this word is a word of God to me. I say that to you because I'm your leader, so you got to put it in context. That's the word of the Lord to me. But it is the word of the Lord to you. And thirdly, it is the word of the Lord for this nation now. Hear it. So I will repay you the years the locusts have eaten. The great locusts and the young locusts. The other locusts, whichever that one is. And the locust swarm. My great army that I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God. Who has worked wonders for you. Never again. Never again. Will my people. Be ashamed. Then you will know. That I am. In Israel. That I am in Jamaica. That I am in Fellowship Tabernacle. That I am in Israel. That I am the Lord your God. And that there is no other. Never again. He's repeating it. Watch when you see God repeat something. Never again will my people be ashamed. Ah. And afterward, glory. Look at your destiny. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Afterward, somebody say afterward. Afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. <clears throat> your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. We have to go find out what it is to dream a dream. What it is to see visions, because that's the destiny of the young men. And it's the destiny of the old. You're going to begin to dream dreams. Sometimes I smile when I say, why does young men see visions and old men dream dreams? We're not getting into that this morning. We're not too fast. Go we'll find out. But come on here. Even on my servants... Both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Watch it. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's the word of the Lord. That's about to happen to us. It's what God is about to do for you. That's the season in which you are living right now. It has begun. I have begun to deliver it. But you must begin to possess it. This is the time and the season for all of this. 
But hear further the word of the Lord this morning. Exodus 35. Time for restoration. Come on, tell your neighbor it's the time for restoration. Ah, uh, it's time for restoration. That's it now. It's restoration time. It's restoration time. Come on, follow the servant of the Lord. It is restoration time. God will restore the years that the locust has eaten. It's the time for your restoration. It's the time for my restoration. It's the time that God will restore this house because the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. It is the time when God is ready to restore this nation so that the years that the locusts have eaten will now be restored, Phil. It has already begun. Here is it. Because you're in this season of restoration, then everything must be restored. Follow. I nearly want to say the logic, but it is logical, but it is more than logic, it's principle. Guide it. You're in the season of restoration, God has, is restoring to us everything that the locusts have eaten. And so therefore, everything that you, in your power, you must restore. Come on, listen carefully to the servant of the Lord. What you have due power and authority over and the ability to restore, restore it. Because you're in the season of restoration. So some things in your life that need to restore, restore. Let me give you just an example of a simple one. Restore your devotional life. Restore. The altar in your family. Start praying again as a family. Start reading again the word together. In the season of restoration is the time when you restore all that you can restore. Because God is saying, I'm restoring all that I can restore. So if he's restoring, but you not restoring, then you are out of sync with God. Follow me here, you know. It's just this morning when I get up, God just show me one thing, you know. As my eyes open. And then it just says, okay. And I'm just sharing it. Out of my flow. You practically... And now I know why he is telling me what he is saying. When he has begun to restore, then you must join in the restoration and restore all that you can restore because he is restoring all that he can restore. And how many of you know that there is nothing that he cannot restore? And so if he is restoring everything, just align with him. Tell your neighbor, just align with him. Don't be working contrary to him. He can be restoring, but you doing something else. Focus, and we say, go with the flow. So start restoring things in your life that not to be restored. Don't restore nothing that not supposed to be restored. Though. No, we are shot from blackboard. But the things that need to be restored, begin to restore. Do what you can to restore. Some broken relationships, restore them. That's why unforgiveness is the first thing God says you must empty from your life. When he's going to bless you, he says, get out the unforgiveness. Get out the bitterness. 
Get out the pain. Restore those relationships. And you have been, I feel the word of God coming. Some of you have been stubborn because you sell yourself. Me nah talk to them again. Me nah deal with them. You're a fool. Because it is not them that's in trouble. It is you. And that's why you're a fool. So you had better deal with it for your own good. Restore. Everything that ought to be and can be restored, restored. By a conscious, deliberate act of your will. Because that's the season in which you are. That's what God is doing right now. So restore. Whenever God, write this down, whenever God promises to do something for you, there will always be something, there will always be something that you have to do. There is God's side and he will be faithful to it. And then there is your side that you must be faithful to it. One, it shows that you have faith. And without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. So you got to, your corresponding action is saying to God, I believe your word and I trust you. And so I will do what you have said. If you don't do what you have said, there is no presence of faith and therefore there is no action that God can continue to do because built into every promise of God is the fulfillment of the promise but built into it is the requisite of faith that's connected to it because wherever faith rises, the word of God is activated. So it cannot be activated where there is no faith. Faith is that which activates every word of God. And that's why it's always a response needed from you to see the fulfillment of the promises of God. Stop saying that God has not heard my prayer. It is impossible for God not to hear your prayer. No matter how much of a sinner you are. So don't continue to talk the foolishness that God don't hear the prayers of sinners. It's an erroneous concept. Doctrines of devils. We're not going there for a while. God hears every prayer. Now, how he responds to it is something else. He said, but the Bible says so. Make sure you understand what the Bible says. Before your chat, say the Bible says. Don't understand. Don't say what the Bible says from your limited understanding this find the truth of what it is is meant by what it says all of you know that you can hear somebody say a word but what you interpreted the word to mean and what they meant by the word they said is very often not one and the same thing come on am i making sense to you understand it so god hears your prayer but you must meet the conditions for the action. And that is, every word of God has something in it that requires your response of faith to activate the fulfillment of the promise. So he then creates the situation 
for you to respond. So hear the word of the Lord in this season of our restoration. Exodus 35, verse 4. Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. Listen this morning, I'm giving you the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord has commanded. From, listen to it carefully. From what you have, not what you hope to get. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing is to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple. Why could God include KC in it? Sometimes you wonder if God make errors. But blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goats here, ram skins dyed red, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastplate. All, come on, all who are skilled, among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle with its tent and its covering, the clamps and the frames and the crossbars and the posts and the bases. Blah, 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 blah. He names the stuff. And go down to verse 20. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting for all its service and for the sacred garments. So all who were willing then, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, and ornaments. Where did them get them from? Where did they get them from? Where the Israelites got them from? Because they were in the wilderness, you know. It was the plunder from the Egyptians that they got before. So what God is asking you to give is not what you must go find. He says it's coming out of what you already have. So he knows what you have. So if you tell him no, you lie. Because he says me give it to you in the first place. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, scarlet, yarn, fine linen, goat hair, ram skins, dried red or the other durable leather brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord and everyone who had acacia wood for every part of the work brought it. Every skill, come on. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun. Blue, purple, scarlet, yarn, fine linen. And all the women who were willing had the skill spun. And had the skill spun. 
the goats here. The leaders brought. Now, I love this. The leaders. So there is not just the people. There is reason why he also said the leaders. God, not tell nobody. Sometimes the people give. Sister, don't ever say that again. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke it and cast it away from you. Sister, how dare you? <laughs> the leaders brought onyx, stones, and other gems. Got the ephod, remember, that is what the high priests wore. So the leaders must deal with the apparel of the high priest because that is the holy of holies he has to enter on their behalf. So everything about the, lead, the, the high priest, the leader, have to be quality because he is standing before the Lord on behalf of the people. So in can look pure, pure. You notice what God said. I am giving you to the priest. He says, I'm giving you these garments for two purposes. For glory and honor. So when the priest put on their garments, it is for glory and honor. It's for prestige. I, so the priest must look good. So what he's really saying. It is to give them honor and glory because they are representing God. So them not to look pop down. And Belias make it no man. It's for glory and honor. You still there or you gone home? Okay. I could just finish reading. Stones and the gems. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil. And for the fragrance, incense, and these seems to be still the leaders. All the Israelites, men and women who were willing, come on again. You notice how many times you see that? All the Israelites, men and women who were willing, brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through mo No, this is important. All the work that the Lord... How? Oh. God never showed me that. That was not my revelation. So, them can say anything they want because God don't tell me that. God not talk to you. He talk to you through Moses. So, praise the Lord. I think I just lost a few wonderful friends. Through Moses... That the Lord through Moses has commanded them to do. The Lord speaks to his people through his leaders of his heart and mind. And the leaders must have faith to trust. That from the people must have faith to trust the word of the leaders and do what God says because then God takes care of them and they never need to fear because God says even if the leader is wrong, he will cause all things to work together for your good so you can suffer for wrong leader or mistakes of the leader. Tell your neighbor, you're safe all the time. Come yeah, on, you're always safe. To obey God, you are always safe. If the leader make a fool of himself, you know what the leader is doing? Bringing judgment on his... It's the very reason why Moses never going to the land. Because the leader going to get fame thing if him not follow through. So he must stay and look on the land, but can't go in. <laughs> All the Israelites, men and women who were willing, brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Come on, quickly. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen 
Biza, Beziel. I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but somebody like that. Yeah, but Bezalel, son of who? Uri, or Uri, the son of her, of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills. To make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, bronze, etc. But then what it says as it gets in the end of it and the next verse. It says, then Baziel came to the Lord, to Moses and says, Moses. That's the verse I was looking for. He says, Moses, tell the people of broad all that we need. Tell them, stop, <laughs> because everything, we have more than enough to finish the house of God. So they had to stop the people from giving, from those hearts who were willing. Okay, with that then, what does God say? When you leave here today, go back over what you hear this morning. Understand it, imbibe it, receive it, but put it in context that you get it. From the jo Joel, what God has promised. And so therefore is your time for restoration. I release that grace and that word of God to you. It's a time for restoration. But in every restoration there is your corresponding action that God requires from you to show your faith. And so just to make sure I break it down for you, your receiving the restoration that he has promised is, is going to be hinged upon your obedience to what he has said as a response of faith so that you will activate the promise and release the fulfillment of the things that God has said. This word of restoration is the time of restoration. Like I told you where it starts. Me. Because I've suffered the last 12 years like I've told you. They have been the worst 12 years of my life. I nearly lost nearly everything that I had. Not because you have never heard me say anything about it. Because I don't complain, man. Because all things work together for what? So I don't worry myself. I just want to know his God. At the beginning... But they turned around and nearly draped God. It's just that I couldn't find where him there. <laughs> so, so for draping, I look for him, but me had struggles to find where him there. Can he hide? Because <laughs> if me did ever catch him when I was into that spheres. Sure. Him go around, him tell me just. Then him finally says, so this is all me, man. You just ease yourself. Trust me, I cannot fail you. Let me give you a scripture. Isaiah 50, I think, on verse 10. When you walk in the dark and cannot see your way, trust God. You will go through some days like that in your life, man. But I'm, why am I saying it? I'm saying it to say to you that this is for me. God says, I'm restoring to you the years that the locusts have eaten. And I'm telling you, he is saying to Fellowship Tabernacle and therefore to every one of you in your personal life, I'm restoring to you the years that the locusts have eaten. And I'm declaring to you this morning, as he is restoring us, so he is restoring this nation 
to become the nation that we have been praying and believing this nation is going to be. I'm prophesying to you the restoration. I have begun to deliver, to restore. You must begin to possess. That's where it is. So what does God require? Three things we, I feel God has said that we've got must do. And we've been looking at it for the last two weeks, but with this, what God said this morning is now I'm seeing exactly how it works and why God has put it that way. The month of March, we have decided for this house, hearing the mind of God, the month of March, we are focused it will be on what we call promotion. So you got to help us. We need every man on deck. Those of you who are not coming out to church, but you are at Bedside Fellowship, we need your presence in activity for the month of March. Promotion. It's a month of promotion. So we're going to get out there and prom do whatever. We want some creative people, but we are going to say to the community around us that we are alive. Those who thought we were dead, we are alive again. Those that was funding with this. Some who even said, because I heard it, number of fellow leaders and people in church, and part, they have said, Miller, this don't. They got to judge him wicked. A long time we know how we did him wicked. We don't know where he's going to do it. One man. And he's going carry gun. Jesus. We got judgment upon him. In dead, in done. Come on, get the point I'm making for you. Understand it. He's restoring the nation. The nation is about to be restored. We were called to be a church to build nation changers. We now got to go out there and change the nation. Help in the process. But the restoration has begun. So he's restoring me, he's restoring you, and he's restoring a nation. But like everything that he says when he does, he puts inside of it that which is your response so that he can respond to faith. He needs to see faith to respond. So this month is a month of promotion. And because of that, now we have to say to the world, we are back. We are here. We're not really there. We are here. But not because just to say it for sake's sake. It is because it, to begin the conquest, we have to now begin to restore the process. So we're going to be doing ad promotion out there. Get out there. Physically, we want to walk around the community over the next... Like when we left and came to this community, those of you who were here at the time remembered that we visited every home within a one mile or two mile radius and we left a package in every home and we said to that to, to every home, we are in your community here to serve you. We have been in the hiatus wilderness for the last 12 years, definitely, which is pretty much since we have been here or just shortly after we came, we've been in the wilderness because we've been here now maybe 14, just about, but the last 12 between COVID and all that has happened to me, the shaking has happened, which has been wonderful. Greatest thing could ever happen to us. But now, we're going back out there now, and so the month of April, of May, we want to march, sorry, we want to make the community know that, come on, we are here to serve you. And we can serve you now better than we have ever served you before because we have grown and matured. So it's for promotion and everything out there. I wanted to get that, all right? And the month of, and, and training. So we're going to be retraining the whole church. So understand, that you, some of you have been called already, because we want to get ready. Getting ready back for this new phase. Because we are going out there now, because now is a new day. It's the new season. So it's going to be training in this month. 
while we're doing some promotional activity out there. So we need, uh, who going to do it? I don't know yet. So we need every mind on deck. So as I talk to you something, to jump in your spirit, then talk to us and say, you want to me that? We can't help you not think it out. Because <laughs> of we that. So there. And the month of, of, of April is going to be the month of performance. So in other words, by April, every ministry should be back up and operating. All of our leaders in back in full place because we are out of the rest period. We are out of the wilderness now. We are going to possess the land. So everything must be back up and running for April 1. And it's not fool me or fool you. So on April 1, everything back in operation. So April is performance month. We must begin to now deliver. Show ourselves. When you come, we must look. The, from a person visits the church, from the car park to the car park, they must begin to see that they have entered the place of the presence of the living God. We're back to top quality performance. So tell your neighbor, excellence. 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 So we got to be excellent. So then now that leads me to the other thing. So understand that. That's what it is. But here is the other thing, and the thing for our faith. God says to my son, for the season of restoration, the restoration begins with you. The restoration begins with you. I have to restore you. What do I mean by that? First, internally, in us, wants to restore us. And therefore, we have to restore everything. So the first thing we have to is two significant things was one to restore for us in this season or to have us restore. We got to restore the house of God to its beauty. Nobody now talk to me. So therefore, we have to repair the temple. We have to fix up the house now to look how it's supposed to look. Pop down, see the carpet, then look how it look. You know, here so everything look out of order from we come here. We have never finished this building from we came because we just couldn't. And you know me, me is not a man who too good upon the arm. The offering raising at all. I yeah, may not have the ninth meant for that. Me just tell you if you do, if you do it, you do it. If you not do it, we easy. Well, may not have that the grace and ninth meant. But we have to pick it up a little bit, you know. So tell you, when we came here, the roof still out there. That's why we're not using the auditorium over there because it a leak. Half of the building at the back, we now use it because it a leak. The roof no good from we come. And therefore, rain a fall inside of it. It's a dry weather place. So therefore, we haven't used it yet. So we don't finish all wrong at the back of the office. When rain fall, you can swim down the middle passage down there. So you just go through. <laughs> Figure around at the back <laughs> when, rain, <laughs> when rain fall. So therefore, God says, first thing, son, in season of restoration, restore the house. Restore the house. So therefore, we got to restore this house, man. We got to get it. Restore. Restore the house. So we got to finish it. We got to do it. I've never said this to you, I don't think, except in the early days, but just to say to you, when we came here, we had to, to move. The whole moving exercise and just relocating, we bought the building, and we never buy it for cash. We are pay a mortgage on it. So bought mean borrow. And we own the building, but, we, but who really own it is one or two institutions. So we've been doing that for the 14 years we've been here, and we had to find the money to fix it up. So we had to do the mortgage, and then we had to find the funds to move, to relocate, to buy these chairs, everything. We perhaps spent about 50 odd million dollars or more in the moving exercise and trying to get this place ready. And that had nothing to do with the mortgage on the building. But once we came in and settled, 
and then we continued doing stuff. So therefore, a lot of that money was given. Some of it was borrowed money because we had to do it in a short time to get everything ready. And so we've been paying it back. And so like fixing up the RSI roof was never a priority. So some people have wondered how this is not done because we don't have the money. And it was not a priority because doing what we have to do there was more important at the time. But God said, no! I am restoring everything, so therefore it's time for restoration. So that's what he's giving us to start with first. So I'm saying to you this morning, we got to restore this house now. With immediacy. Whatever we have to do, we're going to start the process. And therefore I'm also just going to extend my faith and say God would love to finish pay off the mortgage too. Because we have five years left, by the way. So praise God, clap yourselves. You are, we have been gracious that we have been paying off the mortgage that we have. And we have, I think we have about, well, you know, like with everything, is the last few years you really pay for, for the principal. So we're paying down. So we perhaps have about 20 million left. And by it is with our present payment pattern, by 2019, 28, 20, 28, we're supposed to clear off everything. Praise God. And then we'll be free. But I'm not waiting for 28. 2023, we are going to clear off everything so that we can just look to transform a nation. That we can have a little bit of money to compare with staff who we have had no increase in 10 years. But they continue to work faithfully, just the same. Because that's not a priority. That's why I know God gives me some good people. And, and nearly all of them stay. Nobody no left. And then continue. And yet still, no raise up here, no nothing in 10 years. And they never get much from the start. Half of them work on what we call a stipend. Why am I opening up to you? Just me just feel a like God. I don't know, kind of a plan to do it, but you forget it. But now is the time. Restoration. So the two restoration, we first must now restore the house of God and complete the house of God, as we saw in the word. Second thing is, God wants to restore you in health. What did I say? We restore the house of God. Let me try and find the biggest house in here. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> no, no. <laughs> God wants us to restore the house of God, this temple where we come to worship. But he also wants to restore the house of God, your body in which he dwells. Therefore, I'm declaring to you, God wants everybody healed in this season. Yeah. I don't know if anybody heard what I just said a moment ago. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Get this word of faith if you can begin to believe for it. Your body is the temple. It's going to hit you by revelation. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In, all through the Old Testament, we saw every time the temple got in disrepair, God told them, go repair the temple and bring it back to... The, every time the temple was in disrepair, he told them. And the Lord gave me a revelation the last year and a half. I've been walking in it and praying for people based on it. And I begin to see. But Lord, this body is your temple. In the Old Testament, you lived in the temple, but you was only in the holies of holies. So you make them repair it. Now since Pentecost, you now live inside of this temple here now. Now you actually come in here, come live, and you have reunited divinity and humanity in one. Therefore, you repair the temple. <laughs> I 
Don't think you just heard what I said. You repair the temple. And so it has lifted me on a level, thank you, of faith to begin to believe God that outside of purpose, this body must remain in health. Outside of what? Because some things are in purpose. Some of us get sick in purpose. And some of us go and die of some sickness. In purpose. We have to make sure it is what? And make it work the purpose in us. Because some of it is to work some dirty things out of you. That will wake you up because of what you go through. But in principle, he wants his temple what? Restored. If you can receive that, that's a word of faith to help some of you how you must begin to pray and begin to believe by faith and stop running to doctor and everything wrong. You take a tablet and Lord, me I go dead. Yeah, if your time done dead, I'm go about your business. God, death is the greatest thing that could ever happen to your life when you have lived it in purpose. So when you're ready for dead, left it. Nobody do not ball in. You see? But if it is not your time, then therefore, man, let it work. Lessons you to learn. Just humbly learn the lesson and move on. Or if it is any other reason, I bring it by you. Take charge of it and cast it out, man. Because that ain't, not, that ain't for me, man. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I'm living it to the glory of God and advancing the purposes of God. So therefore, we're going to be praying. On the, for the, we talk about performance for the, the April. Come on, we're getting ready. I want my praying people to be in fasting and prayer a couple of days for the body of Christ here, for the healing of God. You begin to ask God to heal you because come April, everyone must be healed. Amen. Well, I mean, nobody yeah. talk to me. It's time for healing. Because we must restore the God's temple and God will restore your temple.